uh, forgive us for that. So this is an official uh, IATF meeting. So we expect you to understand the note well by now. So if there is any IPR you're aware of, please tell us now or tell, let the chairs know at the end of, of the meeting. And please look at the best practices that are listed here. So uh, a traditional ITF meeting and six dish meeting will take minutes. Uh, we'll distribute blue sheets, so please sign the blue sheets with your attendance. The meeting is recorded, the minutes will be published, the recording will be published. You are filmed, some people will see you. So, so please be very aware. Well, please remember to smile and be very nice to other people, yeah. Um, so we have scribes. So we thank in advance our, our scribes. And we ask people, in particular me, to speak slower. So we'll do. And uh, th there's a Jabber room. The, I just sent the pointer for the remote attendance. So if you're on, on voice, I just resend the pointer on the uh, video. So you can also follow us on video. And so, just, so Ines, you're, you're on Jabber? Yeah, perfect. So Ines is our Jabber scribe. If you have any questions on Jabber, just uh, let us know and she'll, she'll go to the mic. Thank you. Okay, and with this, we'll rapidly go through the, the agenda because if we waste all the time of the meeting on the agenda, we'll be screwed. So um, the first thing, and we had a very important and beautiful event at this IETF just before the IETF, thanks to the ETC and, and the deep participation of many people. We have a plug test with uh, actual test reports and test cases, etc. So we'll have 20 minutes on that. And, and at the end of the plug test, we also hosted a hackathon. So Thomas will give us news on that. Um, as you know, we have pushed one document to the ISG, that's the architecture, and we, we got a, a deep a review by uh, Ralph, uh, who basically tells us that, that some expectations are not met. So we need to talk about how we can rework this to meet the reader's expectations. Um, Minimal. Minimal has been kind of proven by the plug test. So uh, Xavi will give us the, the, the basically what the plug test let, uh, told us about minimal and, and we'll discuss about the, the shipping the draft. Uh, six top interface. We, there was, uh, uh, recently there was a lot of activity on six top interface. So we will report on that. There was also another very important topic for us, which is uh, how we'll, we'll use co-app uh, to, to report and and configure the six-top interface. So we we decided long ago that Comi was direction for us, but then there was some issues raised with the use of hashes. So we'll be discussing that. First, Peter will give us the news, and then uh, Michel will, will present us what kind of issues we have with, with the hashes, and, and Alex as well. And then we'll talk about OTF and OTF news. Uh, as we know, that's probably the next beautiful thing that this group will be doing. So uh, we see where OTF stands. Um, and part of OTF is how we can reuse the interface we have on for co-op uh, in interface transported at layer two. And then we'll give you some news about the DeathNet buff, which happened uh, yesterday. And well, we don't yet know if this will turn into working group or not, but at least we'll give you some news about what happened there. And with this, rapidly, because we don't have much time, but I saved two minutes, we can we can start actually on the first item of the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yes, that, that that's part of the debt net is is the we'll have two drafts. Well, it's written there, right? So we'll discuss those drafts as part of the debt net. And with this, we'll we'll give a rapid status on the the draft we have. So. Um, well, the, the draft of the day is really minimal. So um, minimal passed the, uh, IS, the um, plug test and very successfully. So uh, we'll, we, we're a bit late, so that's why it's in orange, but I, we probably think that it's, it's ready for shipment. So um, that, that's, that's for it. The TSH draft turned into an RFC, so we are, we're in time for this one. The architecture is kind of returned to us from, from the initial review, so probably with, we need to, to work that out before we, we move forward with the, again with the ASG. Um, terminology has been very stable, so we'll have to discuss what we do with it, but um, our mass time is passed, so if we think that terminology is stable, then we'll, we'll see on the mailing list to, to push it. And then we've got co-op IE and, co and six-top interface. We really need to, to complete do this work. And um, we'll discuss that on that slot, but we'll be asking all the implementations to really 
and there were four of them at the interrupt. So we really need those implementations to look at the co-op interface and see if it serves the needs of configuring their implementations. So we are we are in the red there. We need to hurry and deliver. So before we get started, uh, is there any comment about the agenda that we just projected? Anything we want to add? Anything we forgot? Anything we want to remove? Okay, here nothing. So let let me ask the scribes to write that the uh, agenda is approved and let's start with it. So we're a minute early. Uh, so the first item on the agenda is a report about the what happened over the weekend. So we had the plug test on Thursday, Friday, and we had a hackathon on Sunday. And so uh, we'll, uh, Miguel Miguel Angel uh, from uh, Etsy will report on the plug test, and we'll have a presentation about a new draft by Dominique Bartel. And then I myself will present uh, the results of the hackathon. So Miguel, the floor is yours. If the speakers could stand in that little pink um, square, then you can be filmed nicely. Okay, so good afternoon. My name is Miguel Reyna. I'm from Etsy. I was in charge of organizing this uh, first 60 plug test with, uh, together with the IDF uh, 60 uh, working group. So I will be giving just uh, uh, sorry. Just just hold the mic, and so when you turn okay. your head, it's it's okay. Perfect. Better. Okay. So can we come back one slide? Okay, so I will uh, give a summary of what we have done this uh, the the last weekend uh, in this uh, 60 uh, plug test. So first, I will give an overview of the event. I will present just a plug test agenda, what we was what was planned for the weekend, the test plan and and tooling that we have been using for the plug test, the uh, results, uh, very high level results, the test cases. Uh, and then some conclusions that I will give the floor to uh, Thomas to explain better than me the conclusions uh, on the plug test. So one uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the event was organized by Etsy together with the um, IPF 60 uh, working group, supported by open mode. Uh, we had 20, uh, 21 participants, 12 companies, uh, three observer companies uh, uh, for people for that, and in total four independent implementations. So we ran uh, 23 uh, test sessions, uh, one of, it, uh, of of those one hour and a half. Uh, we had two configurations, a single hop uh, for which we had 12 test cases, multi-hop configuration, eight test cases, but that configuration was optional. So for the preparation of the event, we organized two, uh, two uh, uh, calls with the participants, and we had many with a group of experts to develop the test specifications. Next slide. So this is just briefly the agenda, how we uh, schedule uh, the test sessions. So on Friday, we had set test sessions in the morning and in the afternoon. Sorry. Come back. Yes, thank you. Saturday, same uh, same agenda, but including the wrap-up session in which we discuss the findings, some errors or whatever we uh, found during the plug test. And on Sunday, we had the hackathon. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is the test plan and tools that, uh, uh, well, the test plan, we, it was developed by the an expert group that it was uh, formed for, for this purpose, uh, it, it, is, it, it was composed of Xavier Villafana, uh, Maria Rita Palatella, Ten Fei Chan, Thomas Weitain. I would like to thank you very much because they worked very hard and they, they made possible this uh, successful of, of, uh, success of the event. So the test plan covered the um, 802.15.4e, uh, 60 ish minimal. Uh, mainly for synchronization, header formats, and uh, later, layer two security. So uh, we we uh, we had 18 test cases, including, uh, as I said, 10 for single hop, eight for multi hop. And then for the tools, we had uh, the hardware was uh, distributed by um, open mode uh, company. So we the, each participant had a kit. 
before the event, we provided as well a golden image writing using open uh, VSN. And the, with this, the participant had the opportunity to pre-test before the plug test. That activity was quite important because uh, it helped a lot to discover already some bugs and fixes that we had to implement before the plug test. And then in the plug test, we, we, had a, a, we used as well the white chart detector provided by Orange Labs. Next slide. So for the, re, the, for the results, we use uh, uh, an Etsy tool, which is called Test Reporting Tool. So after each uh, test execution, the, the results are entered in, a, in, a, in this tool. And uh, all the participants need to agree on the results so that the results is considered as, let's say, uh, approved. And these uh, reports are submitted to the Etsy uh, TRT uh, tool. Next slide. So this is a briefly the uh, test list uh, that we use for the plug test. Uh, I think uh, the, the test specification were distributed to the 60 uh, mailing list, so you can uh, have it. Uh, this is just for for information. So next slide is the list of test cases for multi-hub. So next slide covering mainly Ripple. And here are the results, very high level results. So this is for all configurations, for all test sessions. And as you can see, so uh, we had 93.7 uh, uh, success rate, which is very good. Uh, we ran 221 test cases, so uh, you can see that it was a quite busy weekend for us. Next slide. So here you have more detailed uh, uh, results for each uh, test case. So, for instance, you can see that the uh, synchronous uh, the synchronization and format test cases uh, had a very uh, good rate. Not that good rate in the ripple, but because uh, we found some uh, bugs and uh, we could not run all the uh, test sessions as, as we planned. But uh, it's, it, the, the test cases that were run were uh, quite good. Next slide. So conclusions. I will like to give the floor to Thomas. Yes, thank you very much. So um, these are conclusions that are more administrative. I have some feedback to the working group a couple of slides later. Uh, and if you don't mind, I, I, will, I will jump to this now. Um, but maybe you can present the slides about the roadmap of the other plug test, which is this one. OK, so uh, this is uh, the roadmap for the series of plug tests that we have uh, planned for the time being. So the, the first one is uh, the one we did the last weekend. So we have planned the, the second 60 plug test for February in Paris. This time will not be collocated to the ITF meeting. And we will try to cover multi-hop uh, and security. And the third 60 plug test is planned for uh, July 2016 before the ITF uh, 96 meeting in Berlin. And for, 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 for that one, we will try to uh, address on the fly scheduling and the backbone. So uh, this is a planning. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, restrict. So we we accept any kind of uh, feedback. And if you have any other ideas, so just let me know, and we will try to uh, make uh, or make it in different dates if you like. I I don't know. It, this is just a proposal. Th thank you, Miguel, and thank you very much for XC for organizing this and for everybody for uh, for participating. So, <laughs> so feedback, please. There's something from Jabber. From Michael, uh, he said it would be good if you could make public your date for making your date firm. If we could make public that. Um, Sorry. your date for making your date firm. I public yes. the date. Yes. So so okay. Uh, we will. We have to. How long will it take for us to confirm the dates of February? When will we know? Do, thank you. Do, 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 thank you, Ines. 
do you know when when how fast we can take the decision to have the days that were announced on the last slide well if if there is no other uh, comments on these dates the dates that i showed uh, in the slide it is from 2nd to 4th february mm -hmm. so we can start already uh, uh, looking for some places to to host the event mm -hmm. so so we and, should, yeah so so we can say uh september uh, is that, is that uh, we realistic? will start working we can start working mm -hmm. next week mm -hmm. Good. if we don't Good. have any other Good. Uh, proposals Good. Good. okay and i hope thank you thank you miguel i hope this answers your question uh, michael so the feedback to the group um is first that of course as as running code always teaches you we had a lot of clarifying uh clarifications to do during the preparation of the block test which we did uh, with with the block test participants uh following those Clarifications, we had three new versions of the mineral draft published in rapid succession. So we're now at uh, number number 11. These are small little changes, but since we were implementing against it, we had to we had to re revise them. And then we have a new draft published, which uh, Dominique will present in a minute, which contains the actual captures of the Wireshark dissector. One thing which appeared as a, as a, as a problem in our current draft, uh, and you will tell me if it's a real problem, is that different people came with different implementations of Ripple. In particular, some teams came with Ripple storing nodes, some teams came with Ripple non-storing nodes, and of course they could not interoperate together. So this is the text here that the minimal draft contains now, which said that you should set uh, Ripple to operate in non-storing mode, and you may set it to, a sub, uh, to storing mode and for less constrained devices. The questions I'd like to ask to the working group is, is this text clear enough or should we make one of those should or mays into a must? Should we should we put a must in one of the ripple modes? Any opinion? Because currently the the reading the text, people followed the text and came to the to the plug test with non-interoperable <laughs> implementations so we failed somewhere so it's a villa josana so uh first uh minimal says ripple is a must and uh being a must means that everybody has to implement it so for sure one of the two modes has to be a must because if not how you can implement ripple as a must and should implement mm -hmm. one of the modes or may implement you should must one Yes, so do you have a recommendation for which mode would be a must? Because we, we, to your point, if I follow you correctly, we have to choose one of the modes and put it a must, and the second mode is a, is a should. You're always welcome to implement both. And any opinion? But, but then we will have the problem of the same as we had here, that if we, if we don't must both, then there will be cases that people will not interoperate. So, so uh, I would like to understand the arguments on the table here. Um, is uh, about maybe the code footprint. Is it like a lot more code if you have a second mode, or, or is it like limited additional work on footprint on the mode? I mean, is it a prime in terms of code space, right, to have them both? So uh, I think it's uh, it's more the the size of the tables that you that you have in memory, especially in the nodes that are close to the dark route. But, but that's a deployment prime, right? People will deploy with one mode or the other, but the prime of musting both is that you have to have it in your code. But, so but I don't think code, it's a problem. Just, it's more just, memory. Yeah. So we have a... From Michael, he said, were there, there nodes which would announce themselves RPL route, no grounded? which might be unable to change mob when they encountered a different mob. This is otherwise a question about mandatory to implement. Yes, Michael, the answer is yes. There were nodes which were announced, there were DAG routes which only supported one mode and there were nodes which announced a different mode. And so they were not able to interoperate. Okay, thank so, you. Randy Turner, uh, does minimal suggest the size of a network? I, I wouldn't want a must for storing 
if minimal says a network can be 5,000 nodes and 20 levels deep. Agreed, but what we must is probably the support of the functionality not turning it on in a given network, right? So it's a fine line you're drawing there. Well, so if, if, if you go to a plug fest. Well, for the plug fest, we define what we do. Yeah, I know. A plug fest is easy. I'm just saying that <laughs> we're not, minimal doesn't specify a plug fest test procedure. So I would be afraid to have a must for storing with an unlimited amount of Notes. network size yeah. to hold my routing table underneath me, you know, Good. so. Point, point taken. Uh, point taken. Thank you. I was trying to look out the, uh, the RFC 6550 to see if it, if it says if, if both of these are must or not, but I couldn't find anything. So, right? so do you know if, if, if is the five, uh, 6550 saying that you have to support both? Uh, does it say that which you have to support? It just leave it open. Yeah. Because no usually you need to have a mandatory to implement the uh, uh, algorithm to be able to interoperate. And uh, I, would, I would think it actually is a problem with the 6550 if it doesn't specify if, if you can actually there's there's a difference to must implement and must use those are huge differences right in most of the cases you have must implement something and you have may, may or should you, you implement other than and you you know can use whatever you want you, are, you don't have to use ever the one that is mandatory to implement you have just had to support it but the, the the real world where you implement all those modes is that there are multiple <laughs> types of deployment like smart grid or whatever and there will be a, a variation of many things like which yeah, uh, that's, which, that's buy, which so th there usage. must be there must be a specification which doesn't come from us which says oh you, you're going to make this stack this particular stack like zigbee ip right yeah and and a zigbee ip of the world says storing as non storing as part of the many parameters which are all necessary to get an interoperation yeah, so, so so that would be the chain that the, that profile makes uh, use of one of these modes as mandatory but it would it doesn't say anything about to have to have to implement uh, both of those so i would i would actually say that it would be best to say that you must implement both and you may use the whatever your profile says but because in that case the device can be used in profile a that is requiring this and profile b that requires the other one so you can actually have the device supporting both of those with different configurations um Hello, Tom. Um, I haven't looked it up, but if I remember correctly, uh, RC6550 says that... Uh, Can you oh, speak sorry. a little closer? You're very... Yeah, so, um, if I remember correctly, uh, RC6550 says that uh, non-implementation non is expected to implement both modes. So if we say both uh, must for both modes here, wouldn't that be kind of contradicted? No, there's a difference between the goals of the two specs, right? Uh, repo is a very generic tool, and you can pick things. Here we are talking about a document from which we expect interoperation. So, so we, we actually saying a lot about how you use things so that we get effectively interoperation between minimal implementation. So it's a really different type of document. So I'd like to cut the line uh, after Robert, and then we have to move on and take it on the mailing list. Robert? Uh, Robert Craigie. So if you make a story mode mandatory to implement, then you are you know, making those nodes which you know, you have to have large RAM requirements there for nodes close to the root and things like that. And that's it's going to be difficult to implement those okay. in a lot of cases. So, so Robert's comment, if I may paraphrase, is that if you choose storing mode as a must, then you limit the modes. That, then it's a problem for modes that have very little RAM, especially close to the root. I, I have to cut the line. Yes, I have to cut the line. Thank you very much. I, I propose that we go to the mailing list uh, for this, but uh, but we ha we have to make a, a decision here. Uh, the next item is Dominique, who's catching up, <laughs> and he just typed up and stood up. <laughs> so. Dominique, we'll ask you to be quick because we are already late. I'm the one who said you speak too quickly. So. <laughs> Uh, okay, just reporting on a new draft that uh, was published recently. Uh, this, this is work by uh, my colleague Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan um, upgraded the uh, Wireshark uh, dissector for 15.4 to uh, decode and dissect the uh, options for 15.4 E TSCH um, that we need for 6 dish. And so, um, yeah. next slide, please. 
And so, um, so again, we didn't do the full 15.4e, not the DSME, LLVN, and, and all that stuff, just the TSCH part and the parts that we needed for 6 stage. And uh, then together with uh, Thomas, we run the open implementation, open WSN implementation of 6 stage minimal and uh, just copied the output of Wireshark uh, into a draft so that it stays as a reference document uh, as to what you should ex expect. So this uh, simulation um, sees, uh, has three nodes in a linear network, uh, node one, two, three. Um, and you, you can see uh, the nodes sending their EBs, extending beacons for synchronization. Then you can uh, see Ripple kicking in, uh, nodes sending DIOs from the root down to the leaf node, uh, uh, nodes sending DAOs, uh, you can see acknowledges, and then eventually the DAG root sends an echo request uh, to number two, then to number three, and you see the replies coming back. And so this is just a simple example, simple sequence. Uh, again, we, we just dump the Wireshark output into a draft uh, so that people can go and read and, and look at the fields and figure if this is what's expected. So uh, this is work, next slide please. This is work in progress. Uh, there might be mistakes in there. Maybe the output of the dissector is not clear enough. Uh, maybe not all the fields have been expanded to the very last bit. So please read, comment if you want, you know, little updates on this uh, dissector, uh, clear output, whatever, more comments, more text in the outputs, we can do that. Um, and last question, uh, is this, do you think this is useful? Uh, shall it just stay as a draft or, you know, shall, shall we push it forward? And, and so what's, what's the opinion on that? Mm -hmm. So, so I'd like actually, thank you, Dominique, for presenting. I'd like actually to poll the, the working group um, whether we ask uh, Dominique, so this was done in the context of the plug test, the plug test is now over, uh, whether we ask Dominique if, if you agree to maintain this document, to keep updating it as we go th towards a next plug test. Can I see people raising their hands now if you are in favor of maintaining this document? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, you have a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there anybody against it to think that this document makes no sense? I mean, it's not useful, sorry. Okay, I see nobody. Thank you. Want well, to make it clear, it doesn't mean we want to publish it as an RFC, but we would like to keep it up to date for as we thought, because we may change things. It would be good that people always have an up to date reference. So thank you so much for doing this work, Dominique. That's great. Absolutely great. Uh, Michael, say that they would really like to have their own pickup files, please. And the raw pickup files. Oh, he would like to have yes. that, please. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, Robert Craigie. Yeah, that was one of my questions about the pickup files and other dis dissectors available as well. Oh yeah, it's been made public. Or, uh, is it, has it been pushed before the plug test? Has it been pushed back to Wireshark? Or? Uh, not yet, I believe. It's, uh, right now, it's on a bit bucket for six dish uh, for okay. Open WSN. Is that right, Thomas? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, the, but the, it, it is available. The plan is to push it back. Uh, Brian Hammerman, um, is this a document that you want to publish as an RFC or do you expect it to be just a living document that continues to be updated as you go along? So I, I wanted, I didn't ask this question because I wanted to talk to you about this first. Uh, for, since we have plug tests planned in the future, the idea is to maintain it as a draft for now and then decide what we want to do with it. What, what would be your recommendation for, uh, for this? So the other on? example I've seen of this, people have just generated a wiki page and they put example frames up there and anybody could go in there and, and, and add those example frames that make sense to them. If this, if you expect things to be updated on a regular basis, publishing this as an RFC really doesn't buy you a whole lot. Okay. So we, we thought of the idea as being a nice fixed document with a number on it. Are you recommending that we move this to the six dish wiki? That, that's one way of doing it. Okay. And, and that way it's as lightweight as you can make it. For the use of today, it's perfect. Now, for uh, when the group closes, etc., cetera, um, and, and we finalize, for instance, minimal, could it be imaginable to put that in the annex of minimal, maybe, because it really comes with it? So in my mind, this falls into the same category as a bunch of other things that um, I love beating up other IESG members over. Um, requirements, use cases, frame examples, um, 
uh, okay, I'll stop there, are all perfect candidates to go into an informative appendix at the bottom of a protocol specification. Perfectly fine. And that way, if you want it to be set in stone as this is what we used at this point in time, appendix appendix works. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks so much. We have to cut the line up after, after you. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Good question. Uh, Shahid from Six Relish ICT. Uh, do you plan to include the actual implementations who, uh, the details about the implementations who participated in this plug test and links to those, for example, OpenWS and is uh, open source and free? What about other implementations? So as part of the Etsy and the way we organize it, these plug tests happen under NDA. So we are not at liberty to disclose the results or the, or the, or the names of the companies. If companies want to move forward and say, we, have, we are one of them and here is our implementation, that's no problem at all, but we cannot, as a working group or as organizers of the plug test, publish that. Now, I can tell you that OpenWSN is an open source implementation and you can get it off GitHub today. Because I said this because uh, it's the same for the Kantiki as well. Mm -hmm. It's open source and it's available. And okay. We're happy to include it. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, so we're five minutes late. We'd like to. Um, th Thank you, Dominique. We'd like to. Uh, talk about the, the hackathon that was on Sunday. We had a, a hackathon in parallel of the big hackathon. The problem is we only had one day uh, because we were doing the plug test the day before. And so we had 11 uh, pr uh, projects presented uh, around and and uh, on technology around 6 and OpenWSN. I will not read this list, but it's there for, for you to see. Uh, nice pictures, uh, lots of people, lots of happy faces. That was fine. And then we had some prizes, and we thank our uh, our sponsors and organizers, Etsy, Open Mode, and Inria, for for providing uh, prizes. And so we had two prizes for the best, the two best um, uh, hackathon challenges that were completed during the day, and one prize for the best presentation. Um, so congratulations to them. Okay, we're moving now to the heart of. Our work group documents, and I'll let Pascal take those slides. So we, uh, one of the documents we charted for uh, at six dish was an architecture document, which was, uh, if I remember the chart of text well, uh, supposed to have functional blocks and flows, and represents how a six dish network works. Um, was the layer three, right? We already have another document for explaining what TACH is. And in particular, in the context of, uh, of a network with multiple six LBR, so a complex network with, with a backbone. So we, we started that work, um, and we basically uh, provided one document which, have, which has like different levels of, of understanding of how deep you go, because that's what we, we mostly worked on some chartered item and did not really work on the unchartered item, meaning that the architecture itself is not at the same depth for everything we did. And we packaged everything we had in one single document. And the result of that is we have a document which does not cover everything we want to do at six stage because there are things which will be done externally like at DeathNet and things we'll reach out to do. And on the other hand, there are things which we really cover in a lot of depth. So we identified that and proposed a structure where we would, we would be publishing volumes of the architecture as we progress. For instance, volume one being uh, deep into how we do repo, uh, six low pad and all these things. And that's what we experimented with minimal and that's what we were chartered for. Um, and later uh, an additional volume with security and how you do dynamic scheduling and later hoping that by then DeathNet has produced its results, how we would do DeathNet in the context of six stage. So, so you see we had this sequence in mind on how we, we further integrate things into a single, in a single architecture, which would have been multi-volume. So we tried that and we proposed that for the uh, ISG review. And the first step of the ISG review is uh, the internet area itself reviewing the documents. So, a direct rate when uh, Ralph was kind enough to, to take on this, this work. And uh, so we had Ralph's reaction on the mailing list. Uh, it's quite long because Ralph made a, a thorough review, but there is a core item that really the way we chose to do things did not meet the expectation of the reader when he takes a document with a name 60 architecture on it. So 
with this, we have to decide how we, we move forward with this document. In one hand, we have the charter, which says, explain to us how a network works with six Lopan, with Ripple, and with TSCH under that, which is basically the charter being quote. And on the other hand, um, how do we express to the world the things that we have been exploring deeper? Should that be the same document? Um, and for the global architecture, should we take the document back to make to, to deliver it when we are done with everything? These are basically the two sorts of questions. How do we restructure this? What do we hold till we are fully done? And what can we publish today so that the world knows where we are? And so, next slide, please, Thomas. Okay, so that's mostly what I said, so next slide. I just extracted uh, one of Ralph's comments because I was mostly in agreement with a lot of things that he said. There was one particular uh, thing for which we, we were not in agreement. That was whether the document should coverage, should cover how a six lopine slash repo network works in the context of six dash. For Ralph's comment, which is, I don't want to paraphrase, so it's written there, um, basically, that should not have been this document because it was too deep, kind of. That's how I understand the comment. And for me, it was the core of what I wanted to have in this document as, as uh, editor with the charter I had in front of me. So uh, I understand when we go deeper, and sometimes we went really too deep in this document. Um, but this, this sort of content is really the one I wanted to see. And so if we have a disagreement there, then we have a fundamental disagreement on what this document is about. So I just wanted to, to, to stress this particular point. My reading and my desire in the charter when we did this was to be able to show there is a network that six uh, minimal is actually implementing. There are the components that you will find in minimal. Here, here is how they work together and find out if that could be done, right? For instance, in six Lopin, do we have issues uh, talking to Ripple? Uh, things that needs to be done. And actually from the work in this architecture, we ended up pushing requirements to six low. And I thought that was one of the core pieces that six dish could really contribute to the ITF is pick multiple ITF components, ripples, six low, uh, six low pan, and figure out if, if they fit well or if there's kind of work to be done, which we actually isolated. So, so that's basically where we are. Um, we would like a uh, discussion maybe today and then mostly later on the mailing list to, to see how we progress this document. Should we all some of it? Just, uh, publish some of it under which name with, with which content. And Ralph we, and maybe uh, Brian as well, maybe we'd like to have a chat with you to get your feedback first. Um, Brian Haberman. Um, so when I was up here earlier and I said things about, you know, certain types of documents really don't belong as standalone documents like requirements and use cases. Um, the issue I run into with, with things that are called architectures is that if it isn't completely baked, you never know when it's going to change. And the question I have is, do people think that this document, as it's worded, benefits anybody who's trying to implement this technology at this point in time? Or do they, do they need Archie, Minimal, insert your favorite six dish document here before it's actually something they can use. That's the question that the working group needs to ask and answer, right? What, what is a viable deliverable that somebody can use and benefit from? Any comment on that? Ralph, would you have to have a word since it was your review? Um, because uh, just one question to you, Ralph. Um, it was, there is something which was not clear enough in the architecture, so, so actually you didn't really see it, is, is that for everything deterministic, we actually did not put the text in Archie because we wrote that net architecture in parallel, which was re representing all the components and boxes, so the PC and all those things. And we refer to this document, but it was written in small pieces, and, and it was not very clear that we were expected to integrate our architecture with that architecture. Uh, this being done. Okay, so let me, let, Ralph Drums. The, not sure this is right. Ralph Drums. Uh, let me respond to Brian first uh, and, and agree with him um, 
in, in asking that question, is the document as it exists today something that could be used um, in support of building an implementation? And I sort of raised that in the review that I wrote by, by suggesting that the contents of this document might do better as a, as a uh, actually related to what Brian said before, as a wiki page, as a place to be able to refer to, but not as something that's baked in, 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 and, and um, uh, fully ready for, for publication. So I, I, I'll follow up and make that additional suggestion that perhaps a... Um, uh, a, a, a wiki page for the, the document in its current state might be the, the, the right thing to do. The question you had about integrating with DetNet, the, I, I think the reason I, I wrote the comments that I did about DetNet is that there were some references to DetNet and then some references to components, uh, blocks in your, your uh, description of blocks and flows that, and, and if I miss this, please point this out, that um, um, were referred to elsewhere in the document. And I had this expectation of seeing um, all of the components being referred to at some point or another. If there were a way of um, either leaving those components out or, or clearly identifying what's going in here and what's going into DetNet, that, that might have helped. It just wasn't obvious to me. And if you, know, if you, if you want to uh, quote some specific text and tell me, go reread section so-and-so, I'll be happy to do that because I'm, I'm could well have missed it. So we have one suggestion on the table is, is turn that into a wiki page. Um, any other? So Thomas Otten, no, no, no chair. Is there, is it, one, one way could be to, um, so I, I don't know whether we want to keep the architecture graph at all or whether we want to turn it into a document which says these are the different blocks of a six-dish network, and here are the different drafts, and, and make it very, very, very very simple or very, very short, and then have, I don't know if that, if that would be helpful or not, or if it would destructure completely the document, or if this would, I'm asking you myself, or everybody. If you ask me, I mean, the, the reason to go wiki is exactly for that. I mean, what you describe for me is the essence of the wiki page. Okay. Uh, the architecture is supposed to describe how components work with flows so that you understand what Cicero does, what people does in the 60 network because they were not designed to work together. There are gaps, there are overlaps. At some point you need to understand, uh, it's not really when you code the moat, but mostly when you want to plug it in. Uh, what is this protocol doing? Uh, how does it relate to this other protocol, which there is nothing in Ripple which talks about Sixlopan, nothing in Sixlopan which talks about Ripple. And when people want to build network with both, which is kind of useful, they don't know how to do it. It's written nowhere in the IETF document. So that's really what I wanted to write in that particular document for the consumption of people actually building implementations which have both into, into them and saying, oh, you could do several things, but with six dish we'll be doing those things this way so, so now we get some interoperation. That's that's what I had in mind with this architecture, and the rest is. But, but that's not, in my, to my mind, what you just described is a protocol specification, something like Cable Cable Labs Doxis at that level of detail. Cable Labs Doxis goes through exactly what you're describing. Mm -hmm. Cable Labs took a, a, a whole raft of of ITF protocols, um, put them all together, said, "Here's how you run each one of these things." The part of it I contributed to was was generally IPv6 and in particular DHCPv6, actually went and defined some vendor specific options for DHCPv6, pulled the whole thing together and it's a, a, a you know, sort of a line by line, here's what you do to implement a DOCSIS uh, a cable modem using these IETF protocols. And, and that's, that's a great thing to write down, that, but that's not an architecture document, that's a specification document. The, the architecture document is more, the, more of, a, of, a, of a big picture. Um, you could call, an call a specification an architecture document. The, names, the name may be confusing, but it needs to be consistent throughout the, whole, yeah. throughout the whole document. And I didn't think that this document went into enough, to, into that level of depth for sort of line by line, here's how you make these things work. Yeah. But it went into a, a fair amount of detail in some places, not a lot of detail other places. So yes. that, that's but, the volume thing that's what I didn't mind. Wanted to well, no, it's not, not so much the volume thing as, as, 
layers this way. There's, there's, there's one document that has uh, blocks and flows and maybe it doesn't even mention any specific protocols. It just says you need a routing protocol here. You need a, a, uh, you need a shim layer here to, to transport IPv6 over 802.15.4. V, you need a control protocol over here someplace, and here are the arrows that make them link together. And, and so when you come to read the specification, you can understand how the, how the details of the specification work. And then you need a specification that says, at this point in time, you start well, coming back to, to, to cable labs and doxes. At this point in time, you start DHCPv6, and here's the parameters you put into the DHCP request message that goes off to the server. That's the specification document. So that's, it's, it's not a, it's not a, uh, uh, silos in time, it's more layers across, across the, the, uh, across everything. So, so Ralph, um, while, while you and Pascal were talking, Thomas and I were back here, um, hashing out crazy ideas. Okay. So one way of doing this, and it's, I'm, I'm going to reiterate, this is a working group decision. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Is, yeah. Right. Um, if you hold off on publishing this document, and you wait until you have all your building blocks documented. And then this document says, okay, we've got all these RFCs that do X, Y, and Z. Here's how you put them together. That's the architecture document that Ralph is talking about. And I think that's a clearer picture to somebody who's outside of the working group to understand what's going on. If I were to take the existing architecture document and show it to anybody else, who, who has never been in this room, they're going to walk out scratching their heads because there's TBDs and future work here, which doesn't help them understand the architecture. And so it seems to me that if you hold off, make this the, how you put the pictures together, and then you publish the pictures, you're in a much better place. So reopen the document, keep on working till the group is done, basically, is that? Say it again. So reopen the document for the group and keep it active till the work is done and then publish that for legacy. Right. Yeah. So and, and my answer to Ralph is I would not publish the first architecture level that you asked for because it would be too open and our modes are very small. So we really need to take make decisions about the routing protocol, the six loop and things. Um, well, it could be the first section. That's but, the specification part. The, but, the, but, the architecture part is somebody who doesn't know what RPL is can come in and say, oh, I know what a routing protocol is. Here's what it does. I, I can buy that. Then we can rename the specs. All I'm saying is I would not like to, to have auto spec, which, which is vague because people could say six dishes of scope like this, and we don't. But that, let's, let's do that on English. We, we're fast at the time. So do we want to take a hum on, on, on these suggestions? Because it's thank you for your suggestion, but as you pointed out, we should make a decision as a working group. It's not mine. Yeah. So should we should we take a hum or do yes, we take a no hum? Um, since I'm yeah, guilty. Um, so do people think we should reopen the document and, and wait for the whole work to be complete before we publish it, which means that the document will be li living almost as long as the working group will. So who does in, in um, we basically take back the document to the working group and keep it active in the working group till we've got the main uh, subject complete, basically. So basically, ship this as probably the last thing the document ever sh the, the group ever ships. Don't ship it before it's complete. Is it better? <laughs> so, so. Those in favor, please raise hands. OK. Right, so I, I restate the question. So, so the alternates are we try to ship what we have or we take it back. So those in favor of, of trying to ship what we have and continue the ISG review, hum? OK, so the alternate is basically take it back or, or, or drop it. So now, again, we have two alternates, take it back or drop it. Those in favor of dropping it, hum. I expect that the logic is we take it back, right? Is it is it clear? <coughs> no, Bra Brian, with, with so Pascal, Robert, Robert Craigie. So I think Ralph's point is that 
it's a, it'll become a specification. It's very different to an architecture document. You can yes. have a specification which has an architecture section in it, but you can't really have an architecture document which is the full specification. I uh, fully agree with that. It's a naming thing, but yeah, I agree the content is what you say. One comment for Queen. Um, she said that some elements do, do not belong to the current charter from the architecture draft. Elements are not belong to the current charter from yes, Keen. We, we cannot finish this document unless we reach out to do the things which are not yet covered in the architecture, right? Okay. They are not covered because we are not chartered to work on them. Okay, thank you. So, so uh, Brian Haberman, the, um, the, the, the mechanism is easy. Uh, you guys confirm the consensus on the mailing list. And if that goes well, I'll just send the document back and you guys can do what you want with it. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll do that. Let's write in a minute that we'll confirm it on the mailing list and, and take action depending on this. All right. Uh, we're a little bit late, but not. Yes, we're fine, in fact. We're actually perfect in time. Um, the next item, and, and Xavi, I thank you beforehand because you have two presentations back to back. So Pascal will take five minutes to let you rest a little bit. But so you have your first presentation will be on, on the six ish middle draft that you have been working on extremely hard. So um, take it away. By the time Xavi goes there, we, we had a, uh, an item in the original agenda to talk about the six low routing header, six low RH. That was supposed to be discussed yesterday at six low, and I expected to be giving you some news, but actually uh, we didn't have time at six low to discuss the six low routing header. So we'll do that uh, on Thursday afternoon. I encourage you because it, it, it's really impacting us. I encourage you to come to six low and participate to that discussion. This is really how we will compress repo and, and other things um, in the next generation of six low. So it's quite quite important for, for people in this room. Please come to six low and I have no news for you today. That that's about this. So hello everybody. Uh, I'm presenting the version eleven of minimal in the agenda was ten, but in fact the eleven version is presented. So the status of the document is that it was adopted in ITF Vancouver, ITF 88. Last version is 11 and it was published the 7th of July. And in this uh, new version, we up updated a little bit the security section. We add a little piece of text that I will show later so we can uh, have this uh, default K for interoperability tests. Uh, we add uh, several packet examples in an example section at the end of the document. And uh, because we had many different implementations of 15.4e and we had to uh, interoperate, we had to agree on several uh, header fields of 15.4 so everybody was using the, the same configuration. And then uh, I also add here the, the question that was raised before about Ripple, so I, I will not extend on that. And I, I just, uh, we, we already discussed. So the security section we have is the one that we approved in uh, Dallas. No, Toronto, before Dallas. Yeah. Except uh, this last line in yellow, uh, in red, sorry, which is used for interoperability, uh, for early interoperability, and where we specify the K1 value to use in interoperability tests. So then we add uh, an example section with four examples and with streams of bytes because we wanted to be clear on how the headers match and what's the information we send in the packets. So we add uh, four examples. One is an information element, uh, all the information elements that we carry on enhanced beacons according to the minimal draft specification. Then we have another example 
also for the information elements carried in the enhanced beacon, but this time with no default time slot, i.e., meaning that we are changing the time slot configuration of the network. Then we have the time correction, i.e., in the ACK. And uh, finally, we show uh, how the auxiliary security header is built. These are examples for people implementing that, being able to verify that their formats are correct. So for the fields in the 15.4 header, uh, we... we Chavi, I think there's, there's a question. Yeah, I just... Uh, can you move back the previous... Please say uh, your name. Yeah, Subit Das. Uh, previous one. Previous one. Yeah, I think given that architecture document uh, discussion, uh, I think that we need to correct that uh, statement, right? Refer to the 16 architecture. So there is a statement here, right? Refer to 60s architecture document, right? So can you keep that? No. I, I don't see it. So the last lines of the first, first paragraph. paragraph. So I think we need need to possibly uh, either modify or delete yes. that, right? Yes. Thank you for for noting this. Uh, so the, the the thing is, there is a the last line refer to the six inch architecture document for further details. We have to edit this. So we'll. I don't think we can do it live here. So let's take an action item in, in a minute to do this, and and we'll work on the on on the text. But so, to what document do we refer for security? Ah, security again. <laughs> right, help. Pick one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, uh, you, you you can't live with with these cross dependencies in the documents, right? Yeah. So you may just have to pull the security discussion into this document, <laughs> right? Because, or you're going to have to break, you're going to have to break the security stuff out and make it its own document. Take, take your pick. So, so. Okay. Right. Can so, we make, so, so one other suggestions could be that I don't think that the previous sentence says that it is out of scope. So I think we can live with that, even if we delete that, refer to that, because it's not really adding anything, because previous sentence says that it is oh, out so of Oh, so you're just saying drop the whole sentence? Yes. Oh. Because previous sentence says it's out of scope. I agree. This was the same comment. So we could simply drop this sentence, because we are not proposing anything concrete, but says, OK, we have some options here. Uh, yeah. But then the previous line says, OK, okay so you want. can you understand this text without the reference? Can you use it, understand it? Yeah, it's the same text in Ripple and other protocols where we don't have key management. So, 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 so it's out of the scope, I think. It's, that says everything. I love it. But Do you mean, do you wish to say something else? Or do you, are you, if, if everybody agrees on dropping yeah, this I mean, sentence. Okay, so if somebody opposes to dro just dropping this sentence, please hand now. Okay, we'll confirm on the mailing list. Manisha, anything? Uh, Malisha, would you to just have one question? When reading this section, my interpretation is that uh, minimal conformant implementation must have security implemented at, at every time. Is this right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So you did the call for a, okay, so. Yeah. So I, I move to the discussion. Uh, we already discussed about uh, the ripple, the must. And I think that uh, we need to follow that, follow up in the mailing list about uh, what we must, if we must non-storing, if we must storing or what we must. And uh, another, another change uh, is about the, uh, objective function zero in Ripple, and uh, the step of RAM co computation is two times ETX. This is this has been there since 2012, at the end of 2012. And uh, but 
uh, after or while preparing the plaque, uh, the plaque test and during the plaque test, we realized that it has not a lot of sense to have that metric there. And Pascal proposed to have two times ETX plus three. Three times ATX minus two. It's <laughs> not two. Sorry, I mean I edited it, your slides in the main, but then it was remerged and the the edition disappeared. So yeah. What does minimum eleven say now? Sorry. I mean I I don't care about the slide. What does the draft say? Says so two times ETX. This is a proposal change as a result of the uh, plug test, and the proposal. So let me summarize for a minute because now it's on the table. Uh, OF zero says um, you should normalize your step of rank so as to be able to compare one way of computing it with another way of computing it. And the normalization function is a value which goes between one and nine. And so one is supposed to be, oh, my link works perfectly and nine is, well, that's the worst I can accept. After that, I just don't want to use this link. And so the question is, um, you do it whatever you like, but we would like to propose one way of doing this, which basically gives you this expected result. If you start with ETX and you want to be able to compute one, two times ETX cannot go to one. So a link can never be good, even if ETX is pure one. So that, that was part of the rational. The other part of the rational is, is uh, well, two times ETX gives you an ETX of more than four before you reach nine. Maybe that's kind of excessive. So we propose the new formula, which would be three times ETX minus two. And if you realize it, if ETX is one, three minus two gives you one, so you get your perfect length. And then if, if uh, the ETX is four, uh, that gives you a 10, which is beyond. So basically your ETX with this rule would have to be better than four. So if you can live in a world where, where uh, you want links which are better than four, an ETX of four, which is kind of bad, right? Um, then, then three times ETX minus two is actually quite a good formula better than two times ETX. So that's what we discussed at the plug test and we put that on the table for your guys. Comments? Not for this actually, for the sl previous slide. It's been fast, very fast. I'm Tero Kivinen. I actually... Me, Tero, if, if it's, uh, I will just con conclude this one so we can skip back. Yeah, I so, think you have um, the same comment for, for other... Uh, if, if, you, if, if, if you disagree with the change about the three times ETX minus two, please hand now and we'll confirm on the mailing list. And, and, okay, the room seems to, to like the three times minus two. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, <laughs> I think most of the people didn't understand it. <laughs> well, I, I know people, some people like it. If nobody doesn't like it, then I'm fine, right? All right, yeah, so this is something that actually was surprising to me that we are having a text here that is. As, as, we, as you know, that we have been talking about this in IEEE, and this, the table two is wrong, and it, uh, going, it's going to be, you know, and it's going to be changed, it must be changed, because there's a features that don't work in 15.4 if the table two is as written now, which is, you know, there is lots of different, you know, payloads that needs to have a two pan IDs, and with the table two, you can't have a two pan IDs ever with the new frame types, and so, so that's not going to be happening. So if we are going to be saying it's like this, this is going to be broken when, you know, everybody start implementing, you know, 15.4, you know, <laughs> the, the fixed version of that. So I would actually re propose that you actually use the one that is already proposed in the IEEE maintenance, which actually just to say that the pan ID compression is going to be uh, one in that case. Okay, so, so let me rephrase that. With 2011, we know it's broken, and we had to word something that we no, could. No, 2011. It was 2011. It was okay oh, because the, because there was no the pan ID compression field was very clear. It if you have two pan IDs and they are same, you put the pan ID compression bit on and you send only the destination. With 2004 e 2012, oh, so yeah. it was wrong. Okay, so so the point is we needed this text because of an incomplete. And it's just because of that. So what if we index this text with a clear section which says uh, with the, the timed reference specification, you need to do that. But it's only referring to, to when you point to that 
data sets. I, I, I don't understand why you want to people to trace test with uh, versions that you know that are going to be broken after you know pe after people start to implement in later versions. But we we don't necessarily need to want to wait for 2015. You don't have to wait. Other. You can. It, you are already. You know. <laughs> you know. The, it's it's clear the pop written out that 4e is strong in this case. So so you are you are chasing stuff here anyway. So so you can change it in you can define it whatever you be. But you can uh, define it that, but you know that it's yeah. going to be broken yeah. later. Pero we got we got feedback from the implementers of the technology, and everybody was implementing 2 a as it is now. Yeah, but the problem is that as I said, 2 a is wrong. In, we know that. We know. Yeah. yeah. So you, if you, you know why you, why are you still at the reason people are implementing 2 a or, or this wrong stuff is because people are saying oh it's in the draft. Yeah, the comments was it's in the standard, not not in the draft. <laughs> no, it's in your draft. Yes, but it's but in your they, standard. They say it's in the standard. That's what they say. No, it's in this draft. So so um, so. What are you recommending? That we wait for 2015 to come out before finishing no. this, or that we reference in here a, a working document from the IEEE? Uh, that's one of the options. Or you just say that uh, the Panadi compressor must be set to one. In this case. And how do we, in violation with Table 2A of 2012? You don't re refer to Table 2A at all. You just say that in, in this setup, you put a frame version that, you put a uh, extended yeah. address, uh, and short address, and, and you put the Panadi compressor in one and set yeah. one Panadi. How can I protect, I'm sorry, how can I protect for, for, from a future change of your specification, right? So, so well, let's put it this way. It, the, no, normally, yeah. I should not even have to say that. So, yeah. so in, for, for any version which is not this, we should basically have said nothing, right? When, when, is, this draft, when is this draft going to be out as an RFC? Uh, very soon. Later. That's a problem. Before very the end of year? Oh, yeah. I don't think so. This, this draft? This draft, no, it's not going to be come out of. I mean, IETF is not that fast. I don't think so. <laughs> There's so many issues in it, but I, I don't think it actually is going out. And, and so. But but still, there will be products and things shipping with. Yeah, but it, it would be e, but even worse if we, if we put an RFC that we know that it's going to be broken, you know, end of the year. Why the hell are we actually no, putting it, that? It will be never broken because it works. What will be broken no, it, is, is a reference to an outdated document. So if people no. want to implement this on top of for E2012, they need to know how to do it, and we propose a way. But we can we can mark this as being only with the dated for E, and then we say after that you apply the the living I, I E document. Can, can I, I don't understand why you have why are so much against you know defining this as as you know what what why you want to have the panadi compression set to zero what's your use for your what's your explanation of that so so just to put a little bit of context we're talking about a single bit in a header which in what is written now in table 2a of 1540 means that the panadi is elided whereas it's 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 an error as you tell us and in reality it should be a one meaning the same thing so it doesn't yeah. change any it changes a single bit it doesn't change the meaning. It's just how do we represent that meaning, yeah. a zero or a one? The, the problem is that, that uh, I mean, when you when you put out for for example Wireshark, yeah, after to out of, after the 2000 you know 15 version of the four, four 2000 uh, you know this is coming out, yeah, it will actually parse the stuff what it's in into for yeah in 15.4, yeah. so it can't parse anymore your frames because the pan ID compression bit will be wrong. And the pan ID are, you know, it is actually no, it, it for its for its point of view, there's going to be two pan IDs, mm. and it can't parse it. So so it's actually so, causing you know this so, I mean, which we, we problem in the future. Tero. So and 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 I mean, are probably isn't going to be oh we only do support TSCH in in 60s. It's going to be oh we want to support all of the mm, 15 four mm, frames. Mm, mm, mm. So we can. Yeah. So I, I have a quick, quick suggestion. So we do this again. So so. Okay, so instead of referring to this 15 for 2012, that document, right? What is coming, Tero, why don't you just put exact that, uh, the mechanism here in this draft? That's, I, I think that Tero's suggestion is, right? So why do we need to refer to this document when we all understand that, okay, this would be wrong? So instead of doing that, just add that, uh, you know, text here, and this draft will recommend, oh, do this way. 
but in the other way around, we don't want to look to lock your new value of today forever. No by reference. It, so we, not... we need to date uh, your spec, the IEEE spec on which we apply this, because for the future we want to just follow the IEEE spec the, the, as it changes. It may change again. That's fine. So what what I would suggest is that just add the text and let it go through, and then what what IEEE side my understanding is that by uh, October November it will be or the end of the year it will be published. Okay. So when that is available, just uh, put the reference. Now put the text which can go through without you know, any controversy of, okay, this is a document we are referring, which is wrong, and then all the things. I think we understand your proposal. We need to move on. Okay. Uh, I have Last. a quick comment on previous slide. If you need a reference on security, 802.15.9 is actually working on key management management for 802.15.4. Key management is out of the scope of this. We're not doing key management in the minimal. Sorry. I'm just saying that for this last sentence, 802.15.9 is working on key management for 802.15.4. Okay. So that that's the best reference if you want to cite something. Th thank you for your suggestion. This also another Shepard report. So we will be discussing what we do with the document now. So thank you so much for one for Chavi and and Alt for for. Yeah, for, for for this document, which showed that it has a great quality because the, there are actually four implementations of the plug test of this document, and as we saw earlier, they they mostly uh, interoperated. We waited for uh, the plug test to to confirm that before shipping this this document to the ASG. So what I suggest we do is we we confirm this this what was raised today on the mailing list, and then we we basically ship. The, uh, the document to, to the ASG because it has really proven itself. Any comment on that? So please, um, Subir, maybe because you had a clear, uh, uh, make your proposal on the mailing list and we'll, we'll see how we resolve this. Subir, yeah. Please propose exactly what you said on the mailing list and we'll, we'll solve that issue. And so the other thing is we'll confirm that we do three ATX minus two, and uh, we'll confirm that we can remove that reference to the architecture. And with this, we'll, we'll ship. Well, that was the, the thing that we need to complete on the mailing list with Subir. Yes, uh, Subir will, will basically has a to-do here to, to work. Which is pretty much what Tero was saying as well, I think. Yeah. So now Chavi. So, <laughs> Chavi again. So I'm presenting on behalf of uh, Ching Wang. She she could not attend here, so I'm I'm presenting. So this is the draft uh, six stop interface, six stop interface uh, version four. The status of the draft is that it was adopted in ITF 89, and the latest version was published the sixth sixth of July. So in this version, we modified the, the in the young model, we modified the, the security attributes, uh, uh, the, the container for security attributes, uh, according to the comments in the mailing list. Uh, Michael Richardson was one of the commenters. Uh, and what we did is try to cover the case of minimal in that young specification. So we offer uh, a young model, uh, a model to uh, configure the key one and have a key to per neighbor. Can you move, please? Okay. Oh, yeah, the zinc. So then we did minor uh, changes on reordering attributes, trying to make things consistent and trying to group things by by their purpose. Yeah, yeah that's it. No, one, one back, please. We removed, there was a command on the mailing list to remove the, the, the command section that was trying to explain how we should use the, the young model, but this was out of the scope of the specification because we only care on things that go over the years. So we removed that section and then we rewrite a little bit the introduction to the young model. And then we correct several typos. So the next steps are 
to refine which features, which attributes are read or bright or read only or bright only, and make sure that the young model uh, covers that cases. We also want to clarify which attributes are mandatory or which attributes are optional for, for a node. And uh, define a generic method to expose the 15.4 because, uh, as you know, the six-stop interface offers the young model to modify the six-stop MIB, but also offers access to several attributes of the 15.4 uh, PIB. So we want to see if what we propose and if the model that we are using is, is the right one to configure the elements of the PIB of 15.4, not the ones that we are defining in six-stop. There's also the proposal uh, in that other draft uh, from Ching Wan uh, to have a co-op information element to be uh, where, where, uh, where we specify using a co-op formatting that Thomas later will, will explain. Uh, how, how we can uh, use that format between two neighbors to negotiate uh, for sales in the case we have distributed scheduling. And also, uh, we want uh, also to have a review of the young model uh, from, from all the work group members. And I think this is, this is very important because everybody will be using that. So we have to make sure that people that implement this uh, it agrees with the, the model we are proposing. Randy Turner, did you say all PIB or some PIB expo exposition in the final generic method? Is it going to be generic enough to address pretty much any PIB element particularly? Yeah. Okay. And I think that that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Javi. So. Um, we have, a, if you look at the agenda, we have a, uh, an item on uh, readiness level of this document. I'd like to, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to do it when we uh, were bashing the agenda. I'd like to move this after the discussion on Comi because there are some relationships clear very, between this and Comi. So if, if uh, everybody agrees, we'll, we'll move on to the next Comi news and we'll, we'll come back to this uh, status later. So the next item on the agenda is uh, 15 minutes on constraint management. And so we have two drafts uh, and we, we thank the authors to present them here. These are drafts that are published in the core working group. The core working group is meeting just after this meeting. And, uh, and we want to explore here how these two drafts impact Sixtish. So this is not a presentation on Comi and Michelle's proposal. This is a, from a Sixtish point of view. So the first is uh, Peter van der Stock on the uh, on the Comi draft and the patch core draft patch draft. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's Will. Hmm? It's getting worse and worse. <laughs> Can't even walk. Okay. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I wanted to present some issues which have been discussed on the co on the six dish and core mailing list concerning Comi. So let's go to the first one. Uh, first of all, it is thanks to Michel, uh, which has been clarified that we do not only consider uh, servers which are of small small servers, but also small clients which means that where we saw before the clients would actually have all information about the names of all the young, uh, of the, all the items in the young model. This is not true anymore. So the only discussion which we have between client and servers are the hashes, which means that the whole thing became a bit more complex and we have tried to implement that. So the discussion points which we have in the sixth stage is about the hashing of the names. Uh, how dangerous is it? And the second is uh, the patch content format, which we want to use. Okay, let's go next slide then. Okay, so we use hash clashes. We use the murmur three, I think it is correctly called. It gives a 30-bit uh, hash for all the names. Um, and that means that there is a probability that there is a hash clash, so that two names provide the same hash. And you say, please let me have this hash uh, item, and you, the server doesn't know what to do. The probability for a 32-bit hash 
but is given here because it gives you a bit of over uh, and see if you have about 30,000 different servers then the probability of a hash clash somewhere is one on ten and if you have about thousand servers then the hash clash having at least one hash clash is ten to the minus four you want to say something uh, names sorry so if you have ten server types so that means you have all the servers, but there are only 10 manufacturers who have been kind enough to deliver you those servers. Then the probability of a clash is about one per meal. So that gives you the order of magnitude that you have to be thinking of when looking at this. Yes, plus next slide. Okay. So to reduce the impact of the rehash handling as it was uh, foreseen before. So what we do if there is a hash is uh, only when a client uses a hash which is clashing, then at that moment the client will know that there is a hash clash. So there can be lots of clashes somewhere in the networks. So as long as no client uses it, there will be no notification of that. Second thing is we want, uh, if there is a hash clash, we want to distinguish from which module, uh, I'm still there, to which module uh, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, items with the names belong. So the assumption we have made here is that within the module you have no clashes. We think that it's possible to obtain or make sure that if you use an, uh, an, a young module that there will be no clashes. In this case, suppose you have only about 10 or 20 or 100 modules maybe. What you need then is that for every, every hash in your client you have to uh, signal to which uh, module it belongs. And so when the error comes back, it tells you there is a hash clash. It will tell you which two possible, three, four, or five possible modules might be involved and gives you the new hash. So this then has to be administrated in your client per server, which clash, hash clash is there and which new hash is there. No? So that gives you a certain overhead. Thanks to Michel also, he pointed out a few inconsistencies in the specification that is, we will solve them. Thanks. <laughs> Next, next one. Uh, ah. It was thought that, well, these hashes, this may give too much overhead in certain conditions, and it will be good to have assigned fixed names to all the hashes in a certain context. This will need possibly a repository. I don't know who will be responsible for the repository. And we thought it was good to have an alternative to the hash clashes so that an uh, an installation person can uh, decide which kind of uh, uh, handling of the names he wants to use. Either fixed is a repository where everything is known, as will explained by Michel later on, or if you want to use the hashes. What we have been discussed is how these they will be uh, lived together. Either if you have one option and you will only have fixed names and no hashes, or do you will have only hashes and no fixed names? And we have decided that possibly there may be the possibility that some people have servers which are managed with fixed names, but there will be some modules which are unmanaged with hashes in it. It was thought that this is reasonable to expect, so we want to have these things to live together without really impending on the, uh, on the, on the structure of the hash at this moment. Still uh, to be worked out, but several suggestions have been done. This is about hashes. Any subject? Then we go to patch core has, has been supported that there will be a patch added and patch command of no. yeah. added to the co-op specification and that immediately then asks from how are we going to represent the data information with what kind of data format when we send a patch. Um, uh, the example that was cited, I think it was by Thomas, is that we have all those arrays which are indexed. So the array have an index and the index determines which fields it is. How are we going to determine that in the vision, uh, vision format? And we have been looking at the current formats and it seems to be difficult to accommodate them. But what you might do, I agree, is use CBOR, but you have to give some additional information on how to do it. Or there might be another, uh, just use a an, uh, an JSON uh, format, but you need additional rules to do it. Please, next. So here is an example. A cell list seems to be the important one here. 
we have the several fields. The cell ID is the index, which tells you which uh, item of the list you want to have. And we have here two solutions are proposed. One is that uh, you assume that this is ordered. And so that everything, all the contents of array element are sent in the same order. And then you can send the uh, contents of the uh, item like there as an JSON array, right? And you have left out in that case also the identifiers to make it more optimal, which is one possibility. And the other possibility what is suggested is that we <coughs> make it a uh, young object. And for the young object, we use in two objects where, the, left, where the, one, the left one is the index and the right one is the value. Possibly there are other good suggestions. Yeah, a custom moment. So um, this is a little bit of micro optimization, but uh, maybe an important case for micro optimization. And if you really want to do micro optimization, then you need measurements. It, measurements. Measurements. In this case, oh, you cannot leave be, the, the. I hope that it was that shot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Facts, you mean? <laughs> in, in this case, uh, of course, it will be a bit hard to do measurements, but um, is it possible to get something like a prediction, what the probabilities yes. will be? That would really help in, in designing this properly. Yes. So if I, if I understand your remark correctly, there are different ways and s some elements can be, you can access some elements for less cost than other elements, and you want to make sure that those elements that you access often, you access with the least possible cost. And so you, right. we want a kind of a probability of these elements who access 99% of the time and those one never. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, one other question is, is it more likely that the, 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 the elements are all exchanged at the same time, or is it more likely that you actually do something like setting the cell type from soft to hard? Yes. And I think that the answer there comes from the implementers. So we have to um, spur our in implementers to, to, to implement this and come back to the working group with feedback from, does it realistic? Does it fit in packets? And what are the most, the most uh, accessed elements? And so this way we can optimize th for those ones. Thank you for the remark. I have a subsidiary question. If we come to a set of rules, will we put it in the COMI document or will we make an additional uh, document which is dependent on patch and on one of the ex extensions of the format? So I, I think actually it belongs to the application, the extra rules. So, so just this is this has to be discussed in a different work group. Uh, we, I, I propose that, and with Karsten, I propose that you raise this in the core work group since this is not a six-ish document. Well, what car provides is, is a way for you to send send a patch. Uh, can you repeat, sir? What what car provides yeah. for you is a way to send a patch. Yes. And you can either use existing media types. Yes. Or you can design your own media types. Yes. And when that is actually warranted, because we have numbers that tell us it, it's going to be way more expensive to use the existing ones, then somebody has to do it. And Probably your best of doing it on your own. Okay, ping pong. Thank you. <laughs> I tend to agree. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Perfect, perfect. So, I'm next. Going to be in the box. <laughs> if, 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 you, if you agree, if you want to be on TV, you have to be in the box. So, next up is uh, Michel Veillette, and who's talking to us about an optimization called Cool. And you've got eight minutes. Okay. okay, you have time. Next slide. Let's get started. So, um, yeah, uh, what is cool? Uh, so it stands for constraint object language. So I didn't use the uh, the M letter, the uh, management letter in that acronym. That's for uh, two two main reasons. One, um, I think the the feature set of that protocol. Go, could go uh, well beyond just management. It could be used in, uh, in other, other domain or uh, enter domain. The, the second reason is uh, M is my first letter. And they didn't want to use that trick. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Kami, 
tool is the, uh, an extension of Tommy that used the, the, the feature of uh, alternate numbering scheme uh, that was introduced by Peter in, uh, in the last revision, revision seven. So uh, it, it used a, a managed number, so register number and assign number. Uh, so that avoid completely hash classes and all the issue related to hash classes. So next slide. So uh, there's an obvious advantage to use uh, Yang hash. So it's unmanaged. You, you could go take your module and assign your number yourself. Don't have to go to a registry. But there's a, a price to, to pay for, for that, uh, for that uh, feature. So um, I will go to all the, the, the issue uh, currently identified around Yang hash. Uh, there's maybe others, but that's the, the one we know right now. First one is uh, if you try to access uh, an object, a data node that doesn't exist, it might in fact uh, uh, trigger a different object. So concrete example, I want to turn off the light behind me and I might turn off the projector. Why? Because there's no light behind me. So the, 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 the number, the hash I will use for that slide might clash with the projector. So next slide. On the flip side for the notification, if I have two module that has notification that share the same hash, if the server implement one of those module, client implement two module, the notification uh, to that client will confuse that, that client. You won't know if it's from module A or from module B. So the, the client will have to know the list of notification for each sphere to, to be able to know what is that notification. Uh, a third issue uh, is uh, about dy dynamic loading of module that, that could be done during an upgrade of your node. So you upgrade your node, there's new module implemented on your node. And uh, in those new model could create clashes. There's no way right now to disseminate those clash. And if you send notification, uh, client won't know what they are. Next one. Okay, oh, next slide. Okay, uh, uh, an issue we talk uh, a lot on the, uh, on the mailing list is uh, about the footprint of the client. The client need to know, uh, you need to retrieve and store uh, the rehash table of each peer. So if you know talk with 100 peer, each one reporting 100 bytes of uh, hash table, that's uh, 10K. 10K of information that go through the network. Maybe it's not, it's stored in compressed form. It won't take 10K, but still you have to, to manage the, that information. Uh, the client need to, to retrieve and store information about the list of objects, list of notification. So he won't access uh, uh, an object that is not implemented and you will know the notification it received. Uh, the client need to store the full path of each uh, object. So the, the slash something, slash something, that the entire path for each object. If you implement one of the object, those path as 80 byte, 100 byte, that's another 10K of information you have to store. On the mes message side, uh, in practice, uh, the hash about double messages. It's five byte by ID, that, that could be compressed to a single byte. So typical example, message size is twice. Next slide. Yeah. 
So Michel, we are talking about uh, Pascal Thibault here. We are talking about constraint devices and we are talking about triage tables. And so the question is, what happens is if I don't have room for, for this extension? You use structure IDs and you, you don't need all of that. I don't, I'm not talking about your solution, but if we don't pick your cool, if, you're not, if okay. we don't have cool, what there happens to no the alternative? You so have to do it. Well, but if I don't have memory and I have to do it, it's so I adapt cool. <laughs> So, so we, we're just asking you if you have a choice. Uh, no. Why? We had discussion about um, middle ground solution, but at the end, it's really unmanaged versus managed. You know? There's not other really other uh, solution. So we're running out of time. Um, okay. Um, so one minute. Yeah, please, of course. Okay. Uh, so. In detail, cool. It's uh, ID are composed of two parts: the module ID, 20 bits, and 10 bits of uh, the Yang ID. Um, like in uh, net, net and uh, rest count, uh, there's uh, fully qualified names and unqualified names. Those translate to a 30 bits uh, ID for the fully qualified and a 10 bits for the unqualified. Um, so for registration, uh, the 20 bits give a million model ID available for SDO and for all the manufacturers. Uh, so with the 32 bit, we still have two, uh, three fourth of the ID that are reserved and we could use uh, another uh, one quarter to put the yen cash in a, in a different uh, space. So we could use both manage and unmanage. Um, assignment of uh, Yang ID uh, could be automatic based on the position in the, the module, the position of each definition, or we propose to have a way to manually assign those ID with a new uh, Yang statement. Uh, last slide. So that, that's an example of a get. Uh, so get slash mg, select uh, the first element, it's element 17, but uh, for module 14, so that, that gives that number 14337, and followed by the unqualified uh, 18 and 19 that will be encoded in a single byte. Uh, so the first one set um, the context on which module I'm selecting information, and after that I could select with the short form. Uh, and in the return, I get the uh, the three values. Uh, so the first element uh, is a fully qualified, uh, the 14337. The next two are uh, unqualified. So for the payload, it's a two byte uh, ID followed by one byte, one byte, and one byte. Uh, so it's about eight bytes of data for the payload. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, last, uh, I think there's a last one. Yeah, so cool support update create delete uh, using put, pull, pulse, and delete. Uh, we'll support patch if the uh, patch is accepted. Uh, we, we want to have protocol operation for to implement action, a notification stream based on RFC 5277, reporting based on the observe, and, and resource discovery based on those two standard modules. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. I, I have a, thank you for presenting. I, um, is it fair to say that cool is an optimization of Komi or I don't know what you say Komi Komai, but and and do you is the idea to integrate those ideas within Komi and I'm looking at Peter as well, or is this going to be a frontal clash? For the moment, we do not see a mortal clash. Okay, okay. Well, I would encourage you to. Um, to upgrade or augment Komai or whatever you end up calling it with these ideas rather than having two uh, solutions because if in the fields I, ha I have networks
which have resources that identifies with hashes and some that identifies with numbers. Um, and I have to choose with between them, user will never understand. Um, and so, so it's, it's important that we have a solution that can be flexible in my mind. And if you take that path, I'll encourage as well to make it clear what is a must, what is not just like, so that we can implement this without implementing the hash at all. It must be possible with the spec not to do any hash. Microphone, microphone, please. Microphone, microphone. Sorry. Okay. Might be useful to have some numbers with some certain sizes. What are the expectations that you have in Clash and also what the, the, the payloads might be in those cases. Yeah, okay. Something like that, that uh, would help, I think, yeah. help decide what to choose because yeah. you have a choice. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Thank you, Michel. Uh, distributed scheduling is our next uh, section. We have 10 minutes with uh, Diego presenting the six on an update on 6 OTF, and then I will present on Kitchen's behalf of the Co-op IE. Diego? Okay, thank you. Uh, well, uh, this is a draft we, are, we have already been developing for maybe two years now. Uh, I would like to thank the co-authors that are all here, which has uh, created a new version, which is now version uh, 06. Please, next. Okay, so no, no, one more left. One before. One, okay, okay, okay. So about OTF. Um, well, the, you may know uh, from the draft okay, this, uh, this we have we are working on distributed scheduling, and uh, uh, meaning that our other way we go in mixed mode. Okay, or with a PC, we we are uh, developing. Okay, uh, a system where you can uh, trigger the algorithm whenever it's necessary, so we, we reduce the, the, the battery resources, the battery usage, in fact, and uh, resources. And uh, we have a parameterized allocation policy, okay, where, where, you, where uh, we have you know, some tuning to, to do in order to, to smooth all, all, all the management traffic. Uh, we, we can configure uh, and we can access the, the, the parameterization of all this uh, uh, algorithm which is inside. Uh, using an external interface with co-op, and we are on the 06 version. Next, please. <clears throat> so we have done some some in, uh, some changes. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> we have to establish the difference between uh, when to when to trigger this uh, the 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 algorithm, okay, and the number of requested cells. That's a, a, an important detail we have found. Then uh, the bandwidth estimation algorithm defined when. Uh, this is uh, the, the the cells will be scheduled, okay? But the allocation policy defines how many of them are going to be scheduled uh, from what is requested from the algorithm. So there's a two step here, okay? The first step is when it's going to be, and then the second is how many. I have to do separate the, the functions on both of them. Next, please. Second, we have um, defined also, have uh, corrected one, one important thing. That's to define if uh, uh, the cells are going to be uh, on the ingoing, outgoing bundle, okay, which would be uh, another way. So uh, we have defined that this, this would be only on the outgoing bundle. And uh, since we have two, uh, whenever we have a, a link here, from A to B, uh, is going, uh, the cells are going to be only uh, reserved or allocated on the outgoing bundle, uh, which would be uh, then from B to C, also reserving the outgoing bundle again. For the time being, okay, we are working only on the best effort track. And um, yes, uh, and of course, we are not negotiating directly. We are, only, we are negotiating through six top. So we, uh, six top, we uh, negotiate the new cells or, or the, to add or to delete cells, okay, with the neighbors which are, which are, um, uh, which are connecting to, to, the, to the other one, okay? Next, please. So we have specified some interesting points okay, on the default algorithm, which were, were very specific. Uh, we, we need how to know which are the statistical, uh, statistics, statistic, sorry, or where to take uh, that data and to take, that, take those decisions. Uh, there are many algorithms that can be used here. And we have, if you don't want to, to design one algorithm, we have to provide one as a default. And uh, the incoming bundles of a cell allocation comes from the six top to six top in, uh, negotiation on the first step. On the second one, when you collect the node bandwidth, 
uh, requirement from the application that comes from the from the request from itself for local traffic meaning that the from the application you are working on or using on the self node okay so yeah the the child nodes asks you for bandwidth and you have your own request uh, your uh, request for bandwidth and then you have you need and the statistics were from the outgoing traffic what you have already allocated <laughs> so the other the other steps say, stay like uh, stay the same next please and uh, but the step four and five are used uh, for uh, are, are the the ones responsible of triggering the algorithms. Yes, so that that's a, the 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 trigger step. And the one before uh, we have also corrected saying that we are not uh, using the uh, the special allocation uh, algorithm you have defined before. This is because only uh, we we estimate that the algorithm is so simple that we need only a, a reactive behavior. Next, please. Okay. So, what we are going to do next, or where we are planning to do next? First of all, uh, how to deal with level two tracks? Okay, meaning that we are only uh, defining here uh, some way to work with, uh, with the best effort track only, and thinking about that some other type of tracks can be used as specific tracks. And then uh, a, a new item where we should uh, uh, take into account now. Is the chunk appropriation. So the thing is, um, we have, must restrict the number of available software and sources to, to specific chunks whenever uh, we, we want to reuse frequencies, for example. And uh, then to, to the other thing we are working on is to schedule to add on the default, uh, to just at work, schedule to add on the default algorithm, just a, a change of name only, because. Uh, we need uh, uh, to specify this to, uh, according to the terminology derived from it. I think that's it. So, any, any questions for Diego? Questions? So, yes. so I, have, I have a quick question. Yes. Is there is there somebody who has implemented this uh, already? Is there somebody we could could rely on implementations uh, f for this? Because one of the things is yes. in the next where where talking yeah. about next block tests and the yes. scope of the next block test. So yes. depending on how, pro how progressed we, we are by the time we uh, we decide the scope of the block test, this might be in scope yes. or not. We, we, we not have to see. Not yet completely implemented on OpenWSM, but it yeah. should be yeah. in the but in near future. Yeah. yeah. So so it would be good to get feedback and, yeah. and see this running. So there's another implementation we would like to, to, mm -hmm. to test interoperability then in hopefully in Berlin. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, but the, the uh, Chin one can uh, unfortunately not be here, so I'll present the Coap IE draft on her behalf. Um, so we're going to, going to be very, very quick. Uh, Coap IE one was published uh, in uh, on the second, and with uh, one change, we realized that there was an error in it. The uh, Coap IE was declared as a header IE, and that was an error. It should be a payload IE because payload IEs can be encrypted. And uh, the next steps are to see how this merges with a constraint management <laughs> solution. So we're back uh, talking about Komi. So whether we should use an RPC method within Komi Komai, if this is something that is uh, supported, or whether we can do something different. So um, this is an update. Thank you. Taro uh, Kivine from Insatsikor. So you are planning to put your, you know, co-op messages inside the payload IE, but what's, so yeah, you are alloc planning to allocate and, you know, one of the 16 numbers for, or for, for the, that reason. You have to understand that there's 16 different payload IEs in total in all of the 15.4. Okay. And we have, I think we have four of those now allocated. Or okay. something like that. So, but one of the things I was actually saying, there are 15, 59, which was talked about earlier, which provides a key management. Uh, one of the things it provides for key management reads to have a bigger packet to transmit, it can it had to have a, some kind of fragmentation. And also because we have to have a multiplexing, so it actually has, its parts have two species. It has multiplexing layer, which allows to take a packet, yes. frame it up, uh, fragment it up, Add a, you know, some kind of one byte or actually two byte Ethernet type in the front of it, telling what type of the packet it is, mm -hmm. and then over that we run the key management. And that would actually be very good for this one also. We could just, you know, allocate one this, put them inside of the instead of putting the direct to the payload IE, yeah. put in the, the 15.9 yeah. multiplexing layer. 
uh, packet okay. that uh, okay. provides this feature already. Okay. Thank you for mentioning this, and we'll, we'll note it in the minutes. And could I ask you to send a, a pointer to that uh, specification to the minutes? Thank you. I forget the question I was going to. Okay, so so uh, we d we skipped one uh, discussion point after the interface presentation, after, so that Comi was done. The question is, do we do we publish the interface draft now, or do we wait for the Comi draft to have stabilized? Uh, the reason I'm 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 asking this is because we might have to rewrite some parts of the interface Yang model depending on the mechanism that Comi provides. So. So one of the things is if we're going to add, so seeing the presentations, if we're going to add identifiers to different resources and we publish the interface draft, the Yang model now, and then Comi publishes later a version which, uh, which is not, comp you know, where, where it doesn't work, then, then we have a problem. Um, so do we agree that, that we have a dependency here, that we, that we wait for the Comi to stabilize and to take into account all these little optimizations before we can publish our Yang model. It doesn't mean we don't work on it. It just means that we, we don't push it to the ASG by then. So if you, you, I see people nodding their head, could you come to the microphone and say plus one or say yes or no or comment? By the time Peter reaches in, anyway, I, I understand that we will have a, a reference just, um, to, to Comi, which will be um, a standard reference. So we cannot get the RFC yeah. before Comi gets okay. the RFC. Okay. Uh, if one of the issues is, for example, the use of RPC, then I should certainly like to wait that that has been discussed in Japan. So that takes you another few months further. So January maybe will be something stable enough for you, just trying to be realistic. Okay. Thank, yeah. thank you for the, 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 the timeline. Thank you. Okay. It would be fantastic to be able to do this, to, do, to test this at the block test in February. Okay. The last item on, on the agenda, and we are almost on time, is uh, DebtNet and the dependency of Sixtish uh, with DebtNet. And so Pascal will take this. So we have 10 minutes. First, uh, news from the BOF, and then uh, presentation from Shanggang about track use cases, and then Pascal on. For that net, please. So Luz tried to be with us, but apparently is not. So we had a, a both to our work group forming both for Betnet on Monday. Oh, Lou is here. Lou, sorry, come in. Lou, can you be extremely quick? Uh, how about if I just run to this mic then? Yes, that's good. Uh, hi, it's Lou Berger. Uh, I co-chaired the DebtNet BOF. Um, a lot of good work was done by folks. Uh, yeah, prep work was done by folks here, notably Pascal. Um, we had the uh, BOF yesterday. It was really well attended. We basically filled up the room. Um, we covered multiple use cases, of which uh, Sixtish was one of them. Uh, we did the normal polling, and lots of folks thought this was uh, really good and interesting stuff. Um, about uh, half of those said they were actually willing to work on it. Would have been nice to, you know, everyone who thought it was good said they'd work on it. But the fact that we got, I don't know, it was probably like 20 or 30 people saying they're willing to do the work, um, I'm pretty happy with. So I think we had a really good um, buff. I'm hopeful that this work will actually happen, and I would expect um, some good collaboration between the groups. Thank, thank you for the update. We're waiting for, uh, for news then. Thank you. Yeah. Can I ask one quick question? Uh, on one of the slides in the BOF said that DebtNet, DebtNet was only concerned with the wired networks for now. Was that, was that a misinterpret that slide? Well, no, I don't agree with that statement. Okay. So the slide is, I'm not crazy, there, it did there, exist. There was a slide, I mean, we have a charter <laughs> being worked out, so nothing is cast in okay. stone, right? Okay. The work group will decide what it does, <laughs> and, and the, the AD is right. DebtNet, not Sixtish. Thank you. Okay. So next item is the uh, draft from track use cases by Chongang Wang. Uh, this draft, that can go to the next one. Yep. So current status, uh, this draft actually uh, has been presented in last meeting uh, in Dallas. So we updated the document uh, based on the feedback. Uh, basically, we made three updates. Uh, the number one in the next slide is about, uh, oh, here's just a recap. Um, can you hold the microphone a little bit closer? 
Okay, thank you. Uh, this is just a recap. For the uh, the purpose of this draft is uh, kind of uh, proposed two use cases for the CSP to track the industry control and the industry monitoring. And to, uh, you know, the conclusion of the requirements, we need the centralized track reservation or distributed track reservation. And the following three slides, just uh, uh, three major updates uh, after last meeting uh, based on the comments from the, uh, this working group. Uh, the first update is about the uh, added description and discussion about the relationship between the day and the, the track. So basically, uh, our understanding is that the track uh, in CSP is an uh, example or instance of uh, data nets. So uh, we, we, we think the work in the CSP uh, track uh, management uh, could be benefit, uh, could benefit the CSP and also the, the data load work later on. Um, the, the solution from the data lead could be, uh, should be, you know, uh, um, optimized or consider the 6T track uh, management. Uh, I, I, I think I agree. Basically, want to see there are some relationship or dependency between the 6T track management and the data lead uh, um, uh, scope or data lead uh, um, making them. Um, next. Next update is basically about the uh, reliability of the market, uh, market path redundancy. Uh, so we we check this uh, existing work the wireless heart and the data net architecture document and the and the description uh, and also uh, and the, uh, certain discussion about uh, if we use the market path uh, redundancy some process accounts uh, like the uh, power consumption uh, caused by the market path. Uh, so we add a certain description. Uh, the last update. The last update is uh, some matrix. Uh, so we uh, we investigated the RFC uh, 5673 is about the industry routing requirements uh, um, from the row working group. So a copy of your sentence or descri description and, and for the industry control, for the fast control, probably tens of milliseconds uh, uh, for the, this kind of track reservation and for the long critical Close the loop application, maybe like uh, 100 milliseconds uh, or one second. So basically, in summary, we uh, made a three major updates uh, after um, low, uh, after last meeting. Thank you. Thank you for presenting. Sorry, sorry for being pressed on time. Um, this 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 draft hasn't. I haven't seen any much review on this draft. So I'd like to ask the working group. To please go ahead and read this draft and post some uh, feedback on the mailing list. Uh, is that is that fine with you, Changa? And then, uh, so I'll do I'll do the call again on the mailing list. And 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 if we don't get any, I'll assign some some reviewers for this. This will be very useful. Th thank you so much. Thank you. Then the the last item on the agenda is the presentation of the uh, six dish for DebtNet draft, which Pascal will present. I'm afraid that you'll be a little bit run out of time. So just to make sure people know this draft exists, um, um, the, the draft is, is really there to provide the 60 view of, of what we, we would hope from that net in general. Uh, it has a number of uh, issues which are already discussed on the mailing list. I won't have time today to present, but there are slides later in this presentation which show you what we said at that net and then what the questions were on the mailing list. Basically, uh, the core question is what is a track? We, are, we have to write to more specify that better, and the draft is discussing that. It's just a new draft. Please go through it, provide feedback, and uh, as a new draft, there's room for co-authors and stuff, and maybe you work with Sean Gang or I don't know what. So I hear the watches beep. Uh, we're at the top of the hour. Uh, any other business we want to raise before we close? So we, we said that the architecture will come back to the group probably. We, we are almost done with minimal. We said that interface has to be delayed till uh, Komai is finished. We, we are mostly stuck in terms of work to do. So we'll probably have to think, and, and I see my AD up there, my AD up there, my AD up there, and, <laughs> and <laughs> So, so uh, we are basically mostly done with or stuck with what we have. So we'll probably have to think about rechartering, and we'll be talking in the, within the group and and the ideas to see, for instance, if we can integrate uh, OTF or, or new work into the working group. Yeah, I mean, 
that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.